Welcome to Carol's Kitchen. On today's show, I will be making seasoned drumsticks with an apricot molasses glaze and takeout style Chinese noodles. Our musical guest is violinist David Waite, who is a graduate student at MBU working on his master's in Bible. David is from Kezmarok, Slovakia, where his parents are missionaries. While studying violin in Slovakia at the Antona Cegera School of Music, David entered and placed in numerous international music competitions. You will notice today that he is wearing a special Slovakian folk shirt that he purchased recently while visiting his family back home. Today's story is entitled, Say Yes to the Dress, which chronicles the humorous events surrounding the purchase of my wedding dress. Well, time's a-wasting. Let's get to it. First up on the menu today, are seasoned drumsticks with an apricot molasses glaze. This recipe comes in two phases, one where we prepare the uh, drumsticks with a rub and then later applying the uh, apricot molasses glaze. So I have here a dozen drumsticks and I've pre-treated them uh, as the recipe calls for with plain old yellow mustard. Just coat them, probably about a teaspoon of yellow mustard on each drumstick. And the reason behind that is when it goes into the oven, it'll help the skin uh, brown evenly and it'll get a crispier drumstick when all is said and done. I've created, I've put together the rub and it includes four tablespoons of brown sugar. It could be light or dark. Two teaspoons of kosher salt two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of a black pepper, and one and a quarter teaspoons of paprika. And I've mixed it all up together. And so we're going to coat these drumsticks with, with this rub and put them on the pan that we're going to put in the oven that I have already uh, coated with uh, parchment paper. Actually goes on pretty easily. Uh, and I think that uh, the mustard helps it to the rub to cling to the drumstick nicely. You probably have done it where you alternate drumsticks when you're putting them on a, in a pan to, to bake, to alternate uh, the, the, the wide end and the narrow end of the leg so that it's a better use of your available space. <clears throat> This goes pretty quickly. Oops. And that mustard is not going to be something that is an overwhelming uh, <clears throat> flavor. If you've got like, ooh, mustard, uh, I don't think you'll have that opinion. It is, uh, it serves a better purpose. And I've got some smaller drumsticks and some larger drumsticks. It's just uh, the way they came in the package and <clears throat> just make it work. I guess some for people with a larger appetite than others. 
and they're completely thawed. You, know, you wouldn't want to uh, not have them thawed. And let me put these a little closer together. The oven is preheating, is already preheated actually, to 400 degrees. And we're going to uh, bake it for 40 minutes. So that will be a little time consuming, but we've got other things to do in the meantime. And here's our drumstick number 12. Just the right amount of rub for this number of drumsticks. Okay. <clears throat> we will place them in the oven, again preheated to 400 degrees, for uh, 40 minutes, 40 minutes. So while that is getting a start, we're going to jump over to working on the takeout style Chinese noodles. It's really pretty quick to go together, and I think you will agree. So we've, first of all, we're gonna make the, the sauce that we're gonna put over top of the noodles. It starts out with three tablespoons of chunky peanut butter. And then I'll add some dry ingredients. This is two, maybe closer to three teaspoons of sugar. <clears throat> One half of a tablespoon of ground ginger. Now, if you use uh, fresh uh, grated ginger, you may uh, want to use a little bit more. But there's that. Two tablespoons of sesame seeds. These are roasted sesame seeds. So we will put two teaspoons of that in here. Add some crunch to the recipe. Two tablespoons of roasted sesame. <clears throat> and I'll mix these together just a little bit, but once we add the, uh, the liquid ingredients, I think it'll come together really quickly. This is two teaspoons of sesame oil. It could be toasted sesame oil. Four teaspoons of minced garlic, and it's the store-bought kind. And then, two tablespoons of rice vinegar. First time I made this, I didn't have rice vinegar, and I used uh, apple cider vinegar, and they turned out just fine, but with the rice vinegar is more authentic. And finally, for a little zip in the recipe, it's one teaspoon of hot chili oil. Let me tell you, a little chili oil goes a long way. The first time I made it, I only made it with a half a teaspoon because I didn't want to fry my tongue and discovered that I could handle that. And so I doubled it up to a teaspoon. The recipe I was looking at suggested as much as two teaspoons. Uh, this is half. You can always add more hot, but you can't take it away once it's in. Now this will be, this is the sauce that we're going to uh, pour on top of the noodles. So let's get the noodles over here. I've already cooked uh, eight ounces dry of uh, angel hair noodles and swish them around in just a tiny bit of oil to keep them from clumping together too much. And uh, that's very lovely and it ends up being like a pound of done noodles. And we pour this 
sauce that we've just made over the top of it and mix it together. Let it swirl around all the way in all, covering all the noodles. And uh, this recipe is sort of a knockoff of, there is a famous Chinese restaurant in uh, Chinatown in New York City. And the owner says he made up this recipe and has made it famous and will not tell anybody what it is. But other people have eaten it and tried to ascertain what it is and tried to duplicate it. And so this is his famous takeout style Chinese noodles. Now you can take a peek at that and it'll, while the chicken legs are cooking, this will give us a chance to marinate just a little bit. Ultimately, when we serve it, we will serve it with cucumber uh, sticks. Just took a cucumber and took all the seeds out of it and, and uh, cut it into like uh, two inch sticks. And so that's the, the, veg the vegetable over the top. And uh, I guess I forgot one final ingredient, which is three and a half uh, tablespoons uh, of soy sauce. Hello, Chinese. Of course, there's going to be soy sauce in there. Almost forgot that. That would have been too bad. So that, and so we, but then, so we put the, the, the cucumbers on top and also some fresh ground uh, roasted peanuts uh, that we'll sprinkle over the top when we serve it. And this is our version of that famous takeout style Chinese noodles. Baroque composer George Friedrich Handel was born in Germany in 1685. He gained fame as a composer first in Hamburg, then in Italy, and finally in London when he settled there in 1712. Fifteen years later, he became a naturalized British citizen. Handel a prolific composer of major choral, orchestral, vocal, and instrumental works is perhaps best remembered for his oratorio, The Messiah. A, David Waite will be playing the Allegro movement of Handel's Sonata III for violin and piano.
Well, the seasoned drumsticks have cooked their requisite 40 minutes at 400 degrees in the oven. And now the step for adding the glaze is, uh, it's time now for that. I will tell you what's in the glaze. One cup of apricot preserves, four teaspoons of molasses, one tablespoon of soy sauce, and one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And it looks like this. Sometimes people suggest that you uh, do uh, put it in a, a food processor and sort of puree it. But I chose to uh, microwave the apricot preserves uh, for 30 minutes a couple times until it, it broke up nicely and has made this beautiful, beautiful glaze. So here we go. So one at a time, we're going to add this. I think I'll do it. Apply it right here in the, the pan where they're already uh, in. Boy, and you, I can see, feel the crispiness of the, uh, the, the herbs uh, that we put on earlier. So that is encouraging that this will be a crispy chicken with this glaze on it. done with this glaze it putting the the glaze on we'll put it back into the oven for another eight to ten minutes and uh, just trying to be sure that we get a little bit of glaze on everything might as well and afterwards we might have a little bit we could uh, put on top of our uh, chicken when we're eating it like a barbecue sauce so this goes back into the oven at 400 degrees Today's story is entitled, Say Yes to the Dress. My plan had always been to sew my own wedding gown. But when the time finally came, that didn't seem to be the best use of my time. So one Saturday, soon after John and I were engaged, I went shopping for a wedding dress. My intention was to find something elegant and affordable. It certainly was not to give the poor checkout girl a heart attack. My first stop was a bridal shop in Madison advertising $99 dresses. Having worked in advertising for several years, I was no stranger to the bait and switch strategy, but since my middle name is Clearance, according to my brother, I answered the siren call of a possible bargain dress. As I scanned the horizon for that rack of $99 dresses, I looked for all practical purposes like, like somebody's mother, not a bride. So my presence was essentially ignored. But I liked it that way, not having to deal with some fawning salesperson flitting about pressuring me. So I casually perused the small rack of reduced gowns and was pleasantly surprised to find several that looked promising. Next, I tried to locate a changing room, but none were available. Each changing area was very crowded, not just with brides, but with moms, bridesmaids, sisters, cousins, aunts, and of course, salespeople. I had not realized how the buying of a wedding dress had evolved into such a large group activity. Not easily discouraged, I peeked behind a curtain in the back corner where I spied two empty changing booths in a large room with an Hispanic seamstress working at the far end. May I try these on in here? I called to her. She nodded. Well, it was not long before I regretted not bringing at least one person with me because bridal dresses are not easy to zip up single-handedly. But since I was in a pinch, I enlisted the services of that nearby seamstress. Strange but true, I fell in love with the first dress I tried on, and the seamstress approved as well. Oh, should I be satisfied so quickly, I wondered. 
I probably should try on a few more to be sure. Well, the second gown was too foofy for me, and I didn't even bother to put on the third one. My mind was made up. So a mere 20 minutes after entering the store, I approached the checkout counter and announced, I would like to buy this wedding dress. All righty, the clerk responded cheerfully, taking out a form. And uh, who was your bridal consultant? Bridal consultant, I asked, a, a bit confused. Uh, yes, uh, the, the employee who has assisted you in choosing your dress. Oh, I, I pretty much helped myself. You helped yourself? You are so, supposed to call ahead and schedule an appointment with a bridal consultant who will help you choose your gown. Well, I, I did have a little help. The seamstress in the back room helped me zip up the dress. The seamstress in the back room? Now she was the confused one. Yes, uh, behind that curtain in back are two changing booths, and when I couldn't fasten the dress, she helped me. The clerk was aghast. Was I not supposed to go in there? Those booths are for brides coming in for a fitting, she scolded me. Sorry. So am I not able to purchase a dress without a consultant? The gal was speechless. Could you just put down the seamstress in the back as my consultant? Oh, how can I? She doesn't even speak English. I hadn't noticed. I tried to calm her. Well, why not list yourself as my consultant? The poor clerk was in quite a kerfuffle. This is highly irregular, she groaned. This is not how we do things at this bridal shop. Well, if I can't purchase the dress, I guess I'll have to leave empty-handed. Sorry for being such a bother. Well, that proved to be the turning point. Suddenly, it was possible for me to purchase a wedding dress without a bridal consultant. But the $99 dresses do not include a fitting, the clerk was quick to add. Not a problem, I said, handing her my charge card before she changed her mind. The clerk rang up the sale. but She didn't even bother to put the gown in a box or a dress bag. I just slung it over my arm and made a dash for the parking lot fully expecting a store manager to chase after, after me yelling, stop, come back here. Who do you think you are? You can't buy a dress without a bridal consultant. Back in Watertown, I called a family friend who is a professional seamstress to set up a time for a fitting. The appointment was scheduled on a school day during my lunch hour. After the fitting, as I was driving back to campus, I got pulled over by a local policeman for speeding. Where are you headed in such a hurry? The officer wanted to know. Uh, I'm, I'm headed back to work. I guess I'm a little excited, energized, because I just had a fitting for my wedding dress and I wasn't watching my speed. Sorry. The officer paused briefly as reality dawned on him. In his eyes, I could see the wheels turning as he made a conscious decision not to rain on the parade of this obvious old maid miraculously turned bride. I'm giving you a warning today, young lady. You watch your speed now, here. I will, officer, I promise. Thank you so much. What a relief. There were no further dress dramas before our wedding day. And that day went off without a hitch. Well, except for one really big hitch when the preacher declared us husband and wife. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. It's happiness producing which is clearly no surprise. For two are better than one, believe me, that is not a lie. Oh, this is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. In the very beginning, God created man. To make for him a woman was also in God. Was 
just perfect, made man's life complete. The ultimate companion, such a blessing his help meet. Yes, God's aware of all our needs, so it really is no wonder what God has joined. This is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. It's happiness producing, which is clearly no surprise. For two are better than one, believe me, that is not a lie. Oh, this is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. It's marvelous. Next up is a hymn arrangement by Kathy DeRuz. Mrs. DeRuz was born in 1954 in Dallas, Texas. She has been playing for church and accompanying choirs since she was 13. She has a an BA and an MA in piano performance and currently teaches piano, organ, music theory, and composition at East Texas Baptist University. Her published works include compositions for piano, organ, handbells, and violin. I think you'll really enjoy hearing David Waite play Mrs. Jerusalem's hymn arrangement uh, of Amazing Grace. It is very sensitive and beautiful.
want to say thank you to David Waite for coming and being our musical guest. And uh, that was very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And now we are ready to eat our uh, seasoned drumsticks with the apricot molasses glaze and our takeout style uh, noodles. So we've sung and played our blessing. So let's dig in. free copies of today's recipes, or for free sheet music to the song, This is the Lord's Doing, please phone 920-262-4021 or email watertowntv at cityofwatertown.org. This program is available to be viewed on demand at watertowntv.com or on the City of Watertown's YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to join us next time for Carol's Kitchen. Mm -hmm.